Yo, JD here, Tyrol Lewis, and as you can see, we're back on F1 2020 once again. And I usually don't do double uploads. Normally, I like to space out my content, but through the high, high demand that was racing on Twitter, I've decided to showcase Belgium Spa. I know it's a very iconic track among a lot of people's favorites, not a particular favorite of mine. But a lot of people really wanted to see if the elevation changes have actually been implemented. The bump going from El Rue to Radalon. And I just wanted to show it as well because I think it would really do justice to how this handling model is. I know that's not the main point of this, but it will give you an, an idea. And I can tell you now, it was super, super fun to drive in these cars. And we're starting off with the Mercedes. No setup, completely default. I think the fastest time by Tom97 is a 42.8 in the Ferrari. And yeah, I'm pretty sure he didn't do too many laps as we invalidate straight away. So that's a good start. As I always do in my world record attempt videos, I always invalidate on the first lap. And I can promise you that that is not intentional. But we'll just go right on board here. And straight away, like I said in my Suzuka video, which I released this morning, so if you haven't checked that out, did a full 25% race there with Lewis Hamilton. It was a lot of fun. So yeah, go and check it out if you haven't seen it. But straight away, the car just feels absolutely planted. And not just because of just the game, really, or just that. I just feel the force feedback going through my hands. I just feel the actual grip of the tyres. I actually feel the weight of the tyres when I'm going through the corner, which is, again something i think we really really have been missing especially in the last few the games that we've received from codemasters i've always described it as driving a hovercraft really i'm normally making corrections based on what i see rather than what i feel and i know a lot of people feel the same way as me but on this game i really do feel the details and i actually feel connected to the track which is exactly what you want and in terms of the handling model, I, I really feel the strength of the, the force feedback and just the tyres as you create more downforce going through the corners, you can really feel it. And it is just an amazing feeling. Of course, this is the preview build. This isn't the final version of the game. And this is on PC as well, on consoles. I know for a fact it feels quite different on console compared to when I played it on PC. So it might be a different experience, but I really hope that they keep this handling model for the launch of the game because I think a lot of people are really, really going to love it. And in terms of this track, I'm no expert on F1, really, to be honest. I'm picking out the small details, like a change of the curb color or piece of grass that's changed. I noticed that curb there has definitely been extended. I'm not sure if that's realistic to real life. Again, I'm mainly just a competitor. I'm not a, a Formula One expert on those things. So I know a lot of people We'll be able to pick out a lot of things in this video which they might see is changing and you can see one thing for certain if that was on 2019 i would have been over the wall i would have been done i've noticed in this game it's just so much smoother just the gameplay itself is smooth for a start but also the tracks the tracks are really smooth the curbs no longer destroy you anymore uh, no it can still make mistakes like that but that was recoverable and i saved that Whereas in 2019, that would have been unsavable. There would have been nothing you could have really done about that at all. So I feel like with Suzuka, like with Hanoi, like with Spain that I've done. Can't think of other tracks that I've already showcased. But every track I've been on this game, it just feels so much smoother. Um, the track is so much smoother. The curbs are so much flatter. They're not huge and they're not unsetting you. Like in real life, they can go over the curves pretty easily. Like in the exit of this one here, you'll be able to see a bit later in this video, you can accelerate on that curb and it's fine. Again, not sure if it's realistic, but you can see there, track invalidation and the track limits are, I feel, much better. But you will see at some points in this video that it can still be improved in some uh, significant sections. But overall, I think it's definitely stricter, uh, definitely more consistent than F1 2019, which is... A good thing to see and so far the lap time we have done is a 142.4 
and I'm not sure if this might actually be the fastest lap that I've done through here. I'm going through a rouge before it was very unstable on F1 2019. Now, it's still a few little bumps, but nothing like uh, 2019. I can't remember if there was a huge bump. I know Suzuka there was, and I know a lot of people said to me that there is, um, but it felt very, very smooth going through there. It felt very controllable. And going through that section, that second sector, the start of sector two, I love going through those corners. When you commit and you throw in the car with that high speed, initially you think it's not going to stick, but then it just grips you round. And if you're driving with a wheel, you can really feel the strength just go up as you go through there. You really feel connected to it. It feels absolutely awesome. You really want to throw the cars in as much as you can. The high speed in this game is such an immense experience. It is so, so fun. And then the low speed, it can be quite tricky as well. If you carry a bit too much speed, you'll be a little bit early on the throttle, like coming out of this last chicane. It can be quite tricky to control. And if you don't get the timing right, you can lose quite a bit of time, actually. So there's still definitely a skill element to it. That bit's really good, but going down the gears, having the downshift much, much slower than F1 2019, which I, I'm a big fan of, to be honest. It's it's really, really satisfying. Going across the line, that's a 42.3, which come to be the quickest. And I think the world record on last game was a 41.6, 41.7, and that was with a setup. So I'm pretty sure we'll be going into the very low 41s with a setup. And I don't think this is the fastest car as well which I'm about to show as well. And you can see we did 42.3, a pretty nice time with a stock setup. Yeah, I was I was pretty happy with that. But now we are going to move on to the Scuderia Ferrari and just to see what the difference in the feeling is with this car. And with this TV offset, it looks kind of weird. But again, I'm really, really liking this camera angle actually. I just, I just really, really like it for some reason. I just feel way more consistent with it can't explain why but go figure it really really works and you can see immediately straight away going for Elrude again no problem very easy to take and you can see by the delta just how much faster it is in a straight line it is immensely fast in a straight line now almost two tenths up going into this first sector but the place it lacks is definitely the downforce. And you can see the Delta start to go down compared to the Mercedes. And I also think of traction as well. It's a little bit uh, tail happy compared to the Mercedes. Mercedes is definitely more planted at the rear. And you can see going through here, we've lost about half a tenth going through this first, first sector, almost a tenth now. But on the straights, we're going to be making up the time. Let's see what we can do going through this corner, almost flat out. Love carrying seventh gear through here. Don't have to do the downshift. I think with a setup, you'll probably end up go go flat out going through there. That will be an insane experience if you do that. Trying to hook on these curves pretty nicely. I think track limits, especially on this corner, um, can definitely uh, be improved. Some corners, like at the end of sector one or the start of sector two, it's pretty strict there. But I'd like to see it as strict on that corner as well. But going into the last chicane, let's see how late you can break going into this one spotting the braking board about 100 meters out that's where brake going down very very slowly going to here use that first gear for the extra rotation and again i said it in the suzuka video it's definitely usable i think in the slow speed corners are really really slow speed corners like here for example it's definitely uh, beneficial but i don't think you'd really gain that much time it's definitely not as uh, significant as it was in uh, 2019 2018 no way at all and going off the track here a prime example of how the track limits are very very strict now and i'd like to see that for all corners but it's good for that corner you really have to be on the limit and it's really crucial to get that right if you get that right you can gain so much time so it's really going to benefit the players who are super super precise which is exactly what you want to see the so first gear again second gear going up and get some pretty good traction and you can see by that time already as i was talking you can see we've already improved so the ferrari is definitely the faster car around this track i'd imagine and i think around a lot of tracks it's going to be very very quick purely because of that straight line speed the mercedes uh, tracks like singapore monaco and stuff i'd imagine it'd be the quickest there 
you hear that new lockup sound. I really like that new lockup sound as well. It's, I think we had the same one in 2019 for a good couple of years now, but that's good to see. And again, it's definitely hard to lock up, but if you want to go to the absolute maximum, you're going to have to push all the limits of the car. And you can see this is a very, very nice lap so far. And going through into here, holding it in seventh gear, a little bit hesitant on the exit, going up into eighth. And then as we hit that curb, that's your breaking point, going down to fifth, then fourth, then going up, short shifting into fifth gear, minimizing the wheel spin, using all the track as much as possible. Fourth gear, using the track on the exit again. I'd like to see that definitely be a little bit more stricter, but now going up into eighth gear, and you can see we're quite a bit up on this time. And going through this flat out left, I actually dip a little wheel on the, gla the grass, which was not optimal, but so far, it's been a very, very nice lap. Breaking at the 100 meter board once again, trying to carry as much speed as possible. Actually going in a little bit deep, but get quite a good exit off this corner and going across the line. What is this going to be? It is going to be a 42.0, almost a 41. And yeah, this track is awesome to drive in this game. It is so awesome to drive. I really didn't like it in F1 2019, uh, despite winning my latest league race there. In fact, uh, I didn't like it on there, but this track, the way you have to throw the car with the downforce and everything, it just gives you such a good feeling. It is, yeah, immense to drive, absolutely immense. So I really hope you like this little showcase of Spa. Let me know what you think, and I will catch you very soon. Lee Grace tonight, 8 p.m. BST, British time. Tune in for that, and I'll catch you soon. Peace.